Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is Simpson's Paradox. Now, Simpson's Paradox is a paradox for the epistemic conclusions that can be drawn from the relationships between particular variables or from a data set. Specifically, it's an issue for the claim that there's one objective interpretation of a data set and that we can know that claim. Simpson's paradox occurs when, if the data are viewed in their entirety, one conclusion emerges. But if the data are grouped in a particular way, or if particular variables are controlled for in a regression, a different conclusion, often the completely opposite conclusion, emerges. So let's take a look. One example of Simpson's paradox that's pretty basic involves a two by two probability table. So imagine that Jane is attempting to decide between two treatments for a disease that she has. She gathers data and discovers the following efficacy. You have a survival chance of 10% for treatment one and a survival chance of 40% for treatment two. Based on this, she thinks that treatment one is clearly preferable. She draws one conclusion. However, if these data are disaggregated by gender, we find that treatment one is actually better for women. It just happens that a lot of men in the sample size that we're looking at took treatment one, and treatment two is better for men. Based on this disaggregation, it seems clear that Jane, being a woman, would be better served with treatment one. The point here is that we can draw completely different conclusions from the data depending on how they're disaggregated. If we disaggregated by race, we might discover a completely different conclusion for Jane based on her race. If we disaggregated by age, we might discover something completely different. The paradox is that there's no one objective perfect interpretation of a given data set because you, depending on what variables you control for, you may end up with completely opposite conclusions. So the paradox is a problem for being certain that we have eliminated all potential confounding variables in a data set. Treatment one might be more effective for white people, people of a certain age, or people with any number of specific genes. We can't know the right groups to disaggregate the data by, so any conclusions we draw may be incorrect or incomplete. This paradox is only problematic for those who think we can draw certain guaranteed conclusions from statistical information. And it's an epistemic paradox that supports the skeptic's position that maybe we should be doubtful or maybe we should be suspicious of trying to draw those certain conclusions from statistical information because we may not have enough information to be confident we have controlled for all the confounding variables. Now, a slightly more complicated version of this paradox can be found in the analysis of regression outputs. We're not going to go into explaining what regression outputs are, but basically you're trying to draw a line that best fits the data sets. The data distributed here appears to have a clear negative correlation. So we have variable x on the x-axis, that's the age of the patient, and variable y is the effectiveness of the treatment. There's a negative correlation between age and treatment effectiveness. We see that regression line going down. However, looking at the data, there seems to be something more going on here. Let's say now we controlled for some other variable. Let's say a particular pre-existing condition where black represents no condition, rep red represents a moderate version of the condition, and blue represents a severe version of the condition. We now see a completely different conclusion that in fact the effectiveness of the treatment increases with age in all three categories, which was the completely opposite conclusion from what we drew before. Our problem was that we did not control for the other conclusion, which has a significant impact on the effectiveness of the treatment, and in our data set is correlated with the age of the patient. The older a patient is, the more likely they are to have had this particular pre-existing condition, and the more likely they are to have a severe version of this pre-existing condition. That pre-existing condition is correlated with the effectiveness of the treatment. But if we're aware of whether a patient has had that pre-existing condition, we can get a better picture of how effective the treatment will be and find that it actually increases in effectiveness with age, not decreases. Once again, drawing the opposite conclusion from a data set once we control for the confounding variables. 
So if you know the variables to test for, you can determine whether it is confounding your conclusions. But the epistemic challenge is that you can never know all of the possible confounding variables to control for. For example, the data here have no obvious relationship, but if we discovered a variable that grouped them in a particular way, we might find such a relationship between data points. But there's no way to determine all possible confounding variables, so there's no way to be certain that any two variables do not have some relationship if the right confounds are controlled for. What do you think? Is there a way to be certain that there are no confounding variables in a data set, even variables that we can't measure well? Or are we always uncertain that a relationship may simply be the result of some confounding variable that's correlated with both our input and our output? The philosophy of statistics and economics has many more paradoxes and epistemic puzzles like this. If you want to see more, like this video and let me know in the comments. But otherwise, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, hit the notification bell, watch this video and more here at carnadies.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.